Why should you read the Culture Series by Ian M. Banks, which is these 10 books, more or less. Uh, this is hard sci-fi. Um, it's by a writer also known as Ian Banks, most famous perhaps for The Wasp Factory, which was his debut novel, actually. Um, and, but some other uh, quite, quite famous novels. Um, that's his sort of literary fiction side. When he has an M in the name, uh, it's sci-fi. He wrote another couple of sci-fi books that aren't culture, uh, but these 10 are, or nine plus, some stuff in this uh, collection. This is hard sci-fi. It's set in um, over a period of time, including contemporary to us. There are, you get at different points, um, dates that connect what's happening in culture to what's happening on Earth in terms of the, the timeline. And there's a story connected to Earth. There's occasional mentions of Earth as well. Um, Earth is obviously a technologically poor society compared to this far future hard sci-fi society, the culture. Um, which is a post-scarcity, space communism kind of thing, uh, a bit like the Federation in Star Trek, um, but it's, it's in um, Banks, and so it's also very twisty and messed up and interesting and weird. Um, and uh, yeah, th think some of the stuff that you start to see crop up in uh, late DS9, but on steroids and uh, with an 18 rating. Uh, these are really interesting books in, in lots of ways, and I think I want to sum up, um, that what I'll do is I'll sum up a couple of reasons why I think you might enjoy them. You know, if those don't convince you, you probably won't enjoy them. And then I'll talk a bit about just making clear what's in the series and starting points. So some, some things that are really good. The number one thing, I think, and uh, of course, lots of factors cross over into why you enjoy any particular one thing in, in, in a book. But maybe the biggest thing is just the way that Banks creates um, a world with uh, dilemmas and with uh, conflict and tension. Um, he's incredibly inventive, uh, but particularly the way his, he sets his plots up and uh, the, the reason, and including the characters, the reasons why the stuff in it matters. And this sounds like a funny angle to take hard cipher that's very much speculative fiction, very much imaginative fiction. Uh, but the best speculative and hard sci-fi sci kind of stuff uh, really does have good plots and good characters. And in fact, that's why you care about this wider world. Um, is a reason why the Arthur C. Clarke Rama novels with Gentry Lee are, in a broad sense, more interesting than Rendezvous with Rama, even though Rendezvous is a pure, Rendezvous is a pure novel. But basically, he repeatedly will come up with a situation where... Um, this wonderful space communist society is in contact with or occasionally in conflict with um, some other body or some society um, and uh, you get weird people on the fringes getting dumped into these situations to try to fix them or do something with them and so you get a clash of another culture or another set of cultures or a problem uh, with the perfect space communist utopia um, and you're at the meeting point and you fully experience the world, therefore, through these distinctive character situations. For instance, in the player of games, the best game player, um, you know, board game player or whatever, in the culture, uh, Jernay Morat Gurge, um, ends up being sent on a mission to play a game in which you get to become uh, the emperor of, of a particular empire. Um, you know, it's, it's this uh, big, I think it look, looks very 3D chess on the front, doesn't it? But this big sprawling game. Um, but so you've got a weird concept and you've got um, the culture wanting something or to engage in some intrigue or whatever in the Empire of Azad. And you have a character who's very interesting as the, the bridge. Uh, or again, um, I've just finished a reread of this, use of weapons. So Calvary, the main uh, character, um, is... Uh, yeah, the man known as Cheredinine Zakawi is this uh, secret agent for uh, special circumstances, which is the hyper um, kind of super secret intelligence service of the culture. And he just goes around in loads of crazy situations, interfering uh, in very specific ways on behalf of the culture in other alien cultures, usually technologically inferior ones, to get things the culture wants out of it. And he doesn't even always know what the mission is. Uh, sometimes he is put on the side, the losing side, a side the culture will want to lose, uh, to achieve some sub-aim within that. Sometimes the objectives change. 
things like that. Um, you've got so you, and and Zakawi himself has this strange traumatic past, and so you've got these interesting characters. You've got them at the the hinge point between society, the culture, and other societies, and that, generally speaking, is a very effective way of experiencing this world. Um, he's also very inventive in other situations. I'm giving one set of examples there, which describe uh, half the novels or just over that. Um, but uh, there's others like Accession, uh, which focus very heavily on the AI minds that rule the culture, really, the capital M mind, uh, which are particular kinds of super high intelligence AI who work with the human-like people of the culture. And um, in this one, you're not dealing with the kind of, ah, oh, this the hinge point character. Um, you're not dealing mostly from a human perspective. You're mostly dealing with it from an AI perspective. So there's this, in that sense, quite experimental uh, fiction, um, which you get, I'm mean, thinking you get a bit of this in, say, some of the Ender's Quartet, Ender's Game Quartet, um, where you really try, where an author is really trying to give you perspective from something that is not human. Um, that's, so yeah, you get that as well. Uh, at, he is also going to the other spectrum. You get the human that you can sympathise with at the hinge point, but you also get these very strange perspectives which are very different to your and my perspectives on the situation, you know, very alien. Um, he is also a great world builder. You know, there's lots of wonderful, interesting things going on in these many cultures. He will very often, uh, not every novel, but many novels, span many locations and cultures and gimmicks and ideas. You know, he has a profusion of ideas. Uh, you know, the, uh, you'll go between um, a world torn between uh, a... Uh, re religious theocracy who nonetheless weirdly probably has the better like this kind of a hyper extreme um, religious theocracy that nonetheless probably has the the more amenable to us more liberal progressive values compared to an otherwise perfectly respectable empire neighboring it um, you've got uh, and then you might then go to a world full of tabular icebergs that have broken off from gigantic glacier sheets which is what actually everyone's fighting over in a war. Very mad, in other books, um, that's in a particular book I'm thinking of. In other books, you've got, you know, gas giant worlds, but where people just swim through the atmosphere. You've got these strange, um, the, the ways the ships of the culture, the big ships particularly are, where they're sort of micro civilizations on one ship, where the physics of it doesn't really make sense to people who don't know very much about it. Um, loads of imaginative things, loads of weird animals, weird AIs, weird, um, planets, ring worlds. Uh, he uh, yeah does uh, repeatedly uh, rob La Larry Niven blind. Um, so yeah, lots of things like that. Very imaginative. Uh, the characters which I've already uh, adverted to are very good. He's a good character writer. Uh, there are often deep layered motivations and processes going on with characters that are not openly fully resolved. There is resolution, but you're not told everything that has to happen or everything you need to know. Uh, you're allowed to work out what's going on a bit as well, but in these very satisfying arcs. Um, and I think a big thing that I'd recommend that I really enjoy about it, uh, and this has come up in a few recent reviews I've done on the channel actually, critically and positively about different writers, is that Banks explores his ideas well. Um, and, and here's kind of what I mean, is that Banks is writing positively about a post-scarcity space communist utopia. He is not against the culture on the whole. He's not saying, oh, well, wouldn't this really be a nightmare? Um, you know, what, what kind of terrible world would that be? He's saying, no, it'd be amazing. Virtually everyone would enjoy it. But there would be costs. And he regularly explores in his first few novels, particularly, uh, also somewhat, I'm thinking it's, uh, say, um, Hydrogen Sonata, which is that the last one, possibly? Uh, yeah, I think uh, Hydrogen Sonata. Um, he explores either the perspective of those who are, um, I think matter actually as well, those who are not in the culture and are seeing the culture or who are on the edge of the culture. For instance, they're special circumstances agents brought in from um, outside the culture to, to do jobs that people in the culture can't do. Um, and they see the culture in action and they both may see what seem to be its genuine strengths, at least that Banks thinks are its strengths. But also they see the enormous costs this has. Now, this is utilitarianism he's exploring, you know. Surely if all these people are happy, this very small number that suffer are not, surely the culture 
knows better than anyone else what it's doing, if it's interfering in stuff, uh, or at least it tries to do good stuff, even if it doesn't always succeed, or at least it tries to pretend it's doing good stuff compared to the people who don't even pretend. You know, there's this genuine attempt to grapple with the f- what, a few things, what, what will human nature look like in such a hypothetical? Um, and also, could there be anything lost, or what are perspectives, perspectives that are more similar to some of ours? Uh, on our world now, um, how do we see it? How do we perceive uh, the things the culture thinks are acceptable? This does connect, by the way, to a, a general age warning. These are 18 R rated, you know, um, a, well, a, even X rated in American terms. Uh, plenty of violence, plenty of sex, plenty of other um, pretty ex- explicit stuff. Uh, and that's something which the culture is very relaxed with. I mean, there's also not the violence necessarily. Uh, that tends to be in the action stuff but say the sex, drugs and rock and roll lifestyle. And it doesn't always gel well with people who see it. Now, even though Banks is in favour of the culture on the whole, and that's pretty clear, <coughs> he is willing to explore the ideas properly. Um, and maybe a bit like in Dune by Frank Herbert, the, the, I'm thinking particularly the, the, uh, the, the wider saga and the way in which he, he does try to examine costs and the general nature of his, his idea of history. Um, whereas some writers will want to say, here's some ideas I have, here's some opinions I have, and uh, offer them very blankly. And, it, and at that point, you're beyond fiction, you're beyond speculative fiction, particularly, and you're into um, didacticism, you're into rhetoric, um, and, and not very good rhetoric at that. Banks is great at this. He is great at uh, both presenting ideas that he thinks are good and interesting and trying to examine what they look like in action, including giving perspectives of those who don't like them and those perspectives being understandable and sympathetic. This is good ideas writing. Uh, And the ideas he examines, uh, this is something that reminds me a little bit of his general contemporary, um, I think they're very similar in age, Lois McMaster Bujold, who's obviously still writing, Banks died in 2013, 2014. Uh, but that Bujold is great at just chucking out ideas. They're in most respects completely opposite writers, uh, but she's just great at chucking out ideas and saying, like, what about um, artificial wombs, you try and replicators? What about uh, this society meeting this society? Um, what a, yeah, and particularly like what about if you had a society that's structured like this, something about Setaganda there, for instance. Uh, what about a monastery world? How, but a monastery world with, in most respects, you know, ha- having really caught up to what other people in the universe, but then, you know, so some societies would see as progressive space age values, like a, a monastery world that is nonetheless very uh, amenable to our ideas. How would it, you know, and that, that connects to the Utah and Replicator idea, amongst other things. All these ideas, all these ideas. And Banks is similar, you know, what would happen um, if uh, while watching a Nova, like using the watching of a Nova from a war that ended a long time ago, you know, because of the nature of uh, the speed of light, um, using that as an occasion where you can have a party to commemorate the end of the war and have art to do with it. But also, and it's on a ring world. And also there's this other factor. Um, or what if, yes, you have a strange object that is b- barely describable in our, in our um, uh, con- context and concepts uh, being debated by minds, these AI minds who are sending each other texts, basically. All these ideas. Um, or, uh, yes, a, a, a gigantic sprawling mega game uh, that, that determines who becomes the next emperor or whatever. Things like that. He's great at that. I should also say he has, on the whole, a really good writing style. Uh, he has um, a uh, occasionally very descriptive, <coughs> generally pretty clear and sparse style, which is economic, agile, strong, and uh, which makes things go pretty quickly. These books read, most of these books read quickly, uh, which for a high concept, lots of, uh, often quite complex, difficult concept writer um, who's dealing with lots of ideas and people and characters, that's an incredible gift. Uh, and that's something true in his literary fiction too at its best. Uh, so yeah, that's a bunch of reasons you might enjoy the culture novels. Uh, just to give you a sense of the, the books, there are uh, 10 books. Alas, I don't have them all in, in matching livery. You will have to uh, forgive me. I collect them at different times. 
Uh, the first, consider Phlebas, um, is a, the, in some ways, plot-wise, the simplest um, and is actually a mercenary fighting for enemies of the culture. Um, there's Player of Games, which is pretty much, I think, the shortest novel. I've mentioned that. Uh, use of Weapons. Inversions, which is from the perspective of... Is, you don't really ever hear about the culture. It's from the perspective of people on a medieval, I think, is it medieval world? Um, yes, medieval world, I think, being interfered with, obviously, by the culture. You know that if you know the culture exists. Um, State of the Art is a novella. There's also, I think, a short story in this uh, collection, or maybe two short stories, but a novella about a mind considering what contact to undertake with Earth, what to do with our planet in 1977. Accession, a complex book about weird stuff happening and factions of minds trying to work out what to do with it. Uh, Look to Winwood, a pseudo sequel to Consider Phlebas, um, which was the first cultural novel I read, in fact. Uh, I think then it goes Matter. Is it Matter? Uh, surface Detail, Hydrogen Sonata, uh, which. Uh, hydrogen Sonata is an interesting coda because it's the last culture book he wrote but which has this thing about investigating the origins of the culture as a species which was there but chose not to join it sublimes becomes transcendent essentially um surface detail is a thing when the culture decides to go to war with the afterlife or something um yeah there's a lot of uh interesting different books there um you know ones which are as I say, they're more action-oriented, stuff like uh, use of weapons or consider Phlebas, more brain-oriented, Accession, um, a Hydrogen Sonata. Um, oh, hi and in the middle, Player of Games, something which has this very different feel because then there's action and then there's brain stuff. It's much more cerebral, but in this kind of approachable character format, whereas Accession is this much more high-concept thing. Or um, Inversions, you know, what does it look like to be subtly interfered with by an outside culture. You can basically start anyway, is the general advice. And I say um, the general advice because though there is a, some timeline and you can pick up some ideas of the timeline, both from the books and online, you can check what people's uh, working out of it is. There are some explicit dates connected to our calendars. Um, the, uh, and, the, and in one, a, the, the occasionally you get stuff referred to. So in, I think, Look to Winwood is a pseudo sequel to Consider Phlebas because it deals with some time later, some of the aftermaths of the culture Idaran War. Um, and Use of Weapons mentions the culture Idaran War. Uh, for instance, I, I don't know if there's other mentions of it, but there's a couple of things where you're like, oh, well, technically that connects to that. Probably the only time it matters in any serious way is Consider Phlebas and Look to Winwood. And I read Look to Winwood first, so it can't have been that important. And I, I loved it. Some I, I've read one list, at least, which says Look to Winwood is the best book. So start where you like. Look up the concepts. Look up, do you want, um, you know, the, I think the later ones both tend to be longer. And at points, I mean, by that, I really mean the last three more, more and more high concept. Uh, but then Accession is functions accession is probably the most difficult of the books i had to literally keep notes to understand who the characters because there's so many minds um involved are uh, so yeah you can start anywhere um i think people often recommend and there's a lot of sense to this though i started with a look to winwood uh because that was the book that was in a charity shop i think uh, but use of weapons or player of games player of games is the shortest in this copy it is i think the actual the actual novel looks like it is yes yeah, just over 300 pages in my my copy that's 370 pages in my copy uh, consider phlebus is a bit longer at uh, nearly 500 so it's a bit and it's also probably the least structurally effective of all the books as much as it's a pretty good book so yeah if you're thinking specific recommendation um either i, I also see state of the art recommended um, but i'd probably go for one of these two Anyway, that is some thoughts on why you might enjoy reading the Culture series by Ian M. Banks. I'd love to hear what you think of it if you have read it, your favourite novels. Why would you recommend it or, or not recommend it? Tell me in the comments. Till next time.